What up, horror fans? I'm back with another Halloween edition review. Sorry if uh, my voice sounds a little scratchy today. Uh, I'm still a little sick. I have a throat cold. But anyways, let's uh, move on with the review. This time I'm going to be reviewing the low budget zombie flick creepy creepy in the form of the way they did it um kind of pretty good acting uh it's definitely worth a watch i give it a 5.3 out of 10 hatchets you'll see why though and uh that film happens to be the dead hate the living Many people remember this back in the day when videos were still available. Or VHS if you want to be smart about it. Um, I wanted to see this movie so badly when I was a little kid. Uh, because when I was a little kid I was really, really, really into zombie flicks. Especially for upcoming uh, directors and low budget companies. So when I finally saw this, I was like, oh. And that, that was really, really, uh, wacko. But in a good way. I liked it. So, my uncle was nice enough to give me the DVD. Uh, he didn't really like it all that much, so he gave it to me. Um, this film centers around, I think, I'll just say a couple since I really don't remember the number of uh, college kids that are going for uh, making, a, of course, a horror movie about the living dead. Sorry about pointing out the obvious. Anyways, uh, they end up basically the place the place they're going to is supposedly haunted but they don't believe it uh, so they pay it no mind then one of uh, one of the producers uh, not producers but one of the directors buddies she decides to go into the basement to find some good props and everything and she hears a noise she finds a coffin or sarcophagus, whatever you want to call it. It's got different types of symbols on it. And she decides, oh damn, this looks cool. This would be worth something uh, in the movie. So she opens it up and out falls a real dead body. Or, as we know, a supposedly dead body. We see the guy who's supposed to be the dead body at the beginning of the film, so we already know what he is. So, anyways, they decide, oh, what hasn't been uh, done in a horror movie yet? Using real dead bodies. And so they decide to use uh, the dead body in, in their schlock of a movie. And what happens is they all hell breaks loose. They awaken them, and and how they awaken them. The reason I call it them is because he's got some buddies with him, and one happens to be this big guy right here. I call him the grunt zombie, but I forget what it it's actually called. Oh, uh, and tiny. Not Tiny Z Solicitor, but uh, the other Tiny, uh, the big guy from House of a Thousand Corpses, he's in this, so that's pretty cool. There, this movie doesn't really focus a whole lot on gore, though. There, there is some gore in it, but most of its, most of the effects in this movie center around gooey, gross-out gore, like you see maggots all over people's hands, stuff like that. Now you do see some heads being ripped off, stuff like that. You get to see a face smashed in, 
and maggots just pour out of the skull. So that's pretty cool. The acting, like I said, it's pretty decent. Like the actors did a really good job. Now here's the downfall to it. Here's why I gave it a uh, 5.3. The music. I did not like the music, it, it was kind of a repeating track all the way through though. Like I liked the score, the score was really brilliant. It's just like the singing music that I did not like. The band, they're called Penis Fly Trap. Some people might like them, I didn't like them. Music is music too, some people, I just did not care for them. Like. In my opinion, they really had no talent. Don't complain to me about saying that, though. There's a lot of people who might say that. Anyways, the special effects, if you've ever seen Full Moon movies, some of them are CGI effects, and you can tell they're CGI. Some of them happen to be mechanical effects. Some of them are uh, just practical, so uh, it's got a lot of... It's got a lot of stuff for everybody. There's a little bit of dark comedy in here too. And kind of childlike humor. Some pretty perverse childlike humor. Um, also, I thought this was a cool premise to everything. If I can call it that. When, when they're in their costumes for their movie they're making. What happens when they die and they get reanimated, they come back uh, with the real shit happening to them. Like, there's this one part where the guy, he's dressed up with a fake brain hanging out and uh, fake blood all over him. When he comes back to life, it turns into his real brain and, and it starts pumping out blood. So he gets real blood all over himself, and he's missing some teeth, so I thought that was pretty cool. And another guy, he's painted up to look like half of his eye is missing, like half of his skull is showing. So what happens, his, his entire face ends up opening up a little bit to where it actually turns into his skeleton, his skull, so uh, that's pretty cool too. There's a, there's not a whole lot, but there's some blood sprays in this movie, like, just shooting out across the screen, shooting out people. Yeah, uh, this, this is definitely a film for low budget fans, I, I liked it, uh, 5.3 in my opinion, out of 10 hatchets, definitely worth a watch, but not really a one to watch, like, oh my god, like, once a month or something like that like but definitely worth a watch uh tom savini commented on this as being a unique horror film for some reason they didn't put the full quote in there uh on the back deep red magazine calls it this sucker rocks a potent zombie cocktail loaded with style wit and high octane energy Eon Magazine says a vibrantly gruesome Argento-esque nightmare. I wouldn't really consider this uh, to uh, compare this, I mean, to a Dario Argento film. I love Dario Argento. I think he is a kick-ass uh, horror phenomenon legend. And I guess you can compare it to his type of work, but not entirely. Like... Dario Argento, next to Tom Savini, George A. Romero, uh, trying to think of some other ones. Can't think of some other ones right now. He's a legend in my book. Like Demons, Demons 2, not Night of the Demons, but Demons. He is a classic in the horror genre. Now we'll get into the special features. Not a whole lot of special features, but here they are. Director and cast commentary, digitally mastered, not remastered for some reason. A full moon video zone, uh, behind the scenes feature. If you remember when you get a full moon video, it would come uh, at the end of the film, a full moon video zone feature. Ch 
chapter indexing or chapter selection, trailer reel, uh, like a bunch of different versions of the trailers, penis flytrap music video, like I said, I do not like penis, penis flytrap, interactive menus, of course, uh, in order to select everything, actor filmography, so you can see what other films these actors uh, have been in, alternate VHS artwork, like you get to see like different covers for it, and stills from the film, like it's a little mini photo gallery of like pictures from the film. Oh, and also, I thought this was pretty cool, Ariana Albright uh, makes an appearance in this movie, for those of you who don't know her, she played in one of my favorite Full Moon movies, uh, Witch House, she played the bad guy or bad girl. Uh, Lilith, the main witch in Witch House, so that's pretty cool seeing a uh, comeback from her in this film. Um, witch House is her best work, though. I did not like Witch House 2, though. That one sucked. But anyways, that's my review over The Dead Hate the Living. I give it a 5.3 out of 10 hatchets. Hopefully you all liked this film. I definitely liked it. Uh, I'll probably watch it tonight. Anyways, that's my review over that low budget, but great, okay, good watch type of film. Anyways, I'll be back with another review uh, tomorrow. Anyways, I'm the psychopathic one saying peace out. Hope you all have a gory story, uh, scary, scary as all hell Halloween. Be back with another review tomorrow.